I'm going to do this. I'm going to get on this boat and I'm going to go the other way. And what did God do? Y'all know what God did to Jonah, don't you? Yeah. So we don't need to revisit that whole story. And what, what ended up happening? Well, well, well. Well, there you go. Ezekiel chapter three. Now, this is what's going to happen to you. You called the priest, right? Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Let's go in here and see what. Start with verse one. And this is dealing with that first right, because remember, Brother came out of Brother Brown's mouth. That priest, that priestly, that they being the priest of the, the okay, all right. Uh, where am I starting, Pastor John? One. All right, and it says here in Ezekiel chapter three, verse one. Y'all on fire tonight, praise God. Moreover, he said to me, "Son of man, eat what you can, uh, what you find. Eat the uh, this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel." So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly, and feed your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate and it, it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. Then he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words, not, not, not nothing else, my words to them. Watch this, Pastor Sean. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech mm. and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of unfamiliar speech and the hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely had I sent you to them they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have listened to you. They but the would house, have, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They would have. They would have, wait a minute. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. He said the Gentiles would have listened to you. Uh-oh, oh, 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 Jesus, listen. <laughs> oh, God, listen. I said, but my own folk ain't gonna listen to you. But just, I said, you have to use some Gentiles. They have to listen. Oh. oh, oh, we ain't done. I, I, oh. that's just, that's just, I told you, I was supposed to read it. We got some, yes, Lord. Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. How, how did he see that? Okay. <laughs> they would have listened to him. Mm -hmm. Oh. Of unfamiliar speech, the Gentiles would have listened, but the ones of same speech wasn't really. Oh God, let, let's keep going because we can sit there all night. But the house of Israel would not listen to you, but they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are imprudent and hard of uh, hard hearted. Oh my God. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces and your forehead strong against their forehead, like an adamant stone, harder than, the, uh, than flint. I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their, at their look, though they are a rebellious heart. Brother Brian just brought that out in Deuteronomy 9. Look, God, listen. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, Receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears and go get, get, uh, get to the captives, to the children of your people and speak to them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Pastor Sean, that sounds like 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm sorry, second, yeah, that's a 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach in season, out of season, whether they want to hear it or they don't. Okay, no wonder God said that. Huh. All right. Uh, then the spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another, and the noise of the wheel beside them and a great thunderous noise. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. 
Then I came to the captives at Tel Aviv and who dwelt in the river of Chabar. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say, to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from, this, from his wicked ways to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Mm. Yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when, when a righteous man turns from, his right, uh, turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, mm, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. He listened. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Hold then, it. Hold it. Okay. All right. All y'all who think you called to preach. Mm -hmm. All y'all who say you preaching out there on, on, them, on the, the, them downtown streets. And like I saw y'all last Saturday posted up is, uh -huh, in front of Jack's Casino. Well, I was waiting for the bus. Let me ask. If y'all call to preach and y'all think y'all doing Ezekiel's ministry, y'all got an Ezekiel ministry? Ezekiel ministry wasn't easy. Ezekiel had to literally lay on his staff for 40 days and then turn uh, for, for, oh, I'm sorry, for a week and then flip over and do another thing. He had to, he had to fuel his, to cook his food, he had to use dung, cow. Mm. Dumb. You think you want to? You think you want to? You think you ready to answer a call to ministry? Anybody? And this for anybody who think you called to ministry. Look at that. Did you hear what the Lord said? He said, if you don't warn somebody, and they die in their sin, yeah, they gonna die in their sin. But guess what? His blood, I'm gonna require at your hand. The Lord spoke to me in a prophetic dream one night. I woke up that morning. You know that you know that what that dream was, and the message of that dream was: don't have no blood on your hands. Do you really think you want to take this calling? Because once you take this calling, you got to look at that. Now, yeah, if you you do the right thing, you you know you preach the gospel, you preach the word, you preach you preach the whole counsel of God. See, the whole counsel of God is. From Genesis to Revelation. Amen. The whole counsel of God is the revealed written word and the rhema word, which is a portion of the gospel or a portion of the word that the Lord gives you to give to the people of God. You can't just come up there talking about, well, I'm going to. I'm going to preach a message. I just got called to preach. I ain't, don't know nothing. That's why the Bible says not a novice. Does any man should stumble. Would you look at this? This is Ezekiel 3. You called to preach. Would you know what you state and what you don't state God 
got something for you. It's called a whooping. And if you really want that whooping from the Lord, go ahead. I had the Lord whoop me before. I don't want that no more. I want to say this to all who is listening, especially in the chat, to those who are listening that are not modeling, keep your eyes up here and stay focused. The moderators got it. They are experienced. They got it. Don't focus on them trolls that's coming in here. They're coming in here to distract you from the lesson. Moderators, you are on code red. Get rid of all foolishness. And I want to say to those who are not moderators, especially the babies in Christ, stay focused on the word of God and the lesson that is being coming forth. Let the moderators handle the trolls. They got them. All right. Don't give them no conversation. Don't pay attention to them. Act like they not even there. The moderators will get rid of them. That's why moderate mod control has been given to certain people. The mods will handle them. Don't give them trolls. No conversation. Pay attention to Brother Brian, Pastor Sean, myself, and the word of God that is going forth. Stay focused. They come in here to distract. The moderators will deal with them. Understand? Don't give them no conversation. None. Moderators, if they ain't on topic, if they come in here slandering, they come in here cussing, they come in here acting a fool, get them out of here. Kick them out. I'm not changing no moderator's decision. You walk up in here at your own risk and my moderator's going to bust your head. So come on up in here if you want to. Everybody else, stay focused on the lesson. They come in here to distract. You understand? Act like they're not there. Just act like you don't see it. The mods will take care of it. They will smash it. All right? We got this covered. We got this covered. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going. All right. So uh, that's an excellent point that you brought out uh, 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 to really dig into what Brother Brian just uh, uh, bought out, Pastor Sean. Thank you for that. And Wait we a minute. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Since some mm-hmm. uh, folk in there, mm-hmm. the Bible says you hard headed. When you acting the way you do in that chat room, we just read it. I, I, I didn't say it, the Lord said it. And this is Ezekiel 3. He said, folk who acting like that in the chat room, trying to distract yeah. and all that, they're just some hard heads. Yep. Hard headed, you hard headed, but guess what? That's why God sends ministers into the into His vineyard. That's why God sends calls, anoints, and appoints ministers to do these things. This is a form of ministry. This is a form of ministry, which means our eyes. We ain't afraid of you. The Lord just told us to command us, don't be afraid of them. Don't even be dismayed by the looks on their faces. So they can give you all them ugly looks and y'all looking all ugly in the chat with y'all hard-headed selves. One part of the Bible called you stiff-necked. Ezekiel calls you hard-headed. Mm. Y'all dare to be out in the, on the corners fussing, stating that you are who you guys people Really? Because what he's saying here in Ezekiel, and if we've gone through the book of Ezekiel, especially when we got to that 16th chapter, then he call you hoes. Huh. I mean, outright thoughts. That's what he called you. So you, you, got, you no, I'm not saying it. The word of God says it. And it will back me up if we read. So He's with y'all who's saying these crazy things to these people in the chat with y'all hard head stiff neck selves. Get out or repent. That's your choice. I gave you the choice. And now I'm done. Go ahead, Don. Amen. 
Uh, so uh, going back and again, this, this hangout is encamped around, do you know him? Who Jesus is? And I'm going to tell you another thing that sparked it, not only the stuff that took place on, on, on Clubhouse, the craziness. And again, I thank you, Brother Brian, for helping me get up there. It, 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 I learned a valuable lesson, sir. <laughs> but I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't uh, with them because it's just too much uh, confusion, too much different winds of doctrine going on up in there, and it's no order too much, and and it's not nothing against Faithful or G Con or Kevin G or Brother Brian. They doing the work over there, but them folk over there, they just stiff neck and don't want to listen. Uh, so again, and I, I'd rather spend time going through the truth of God and, and learn, learning more about God. Because listen, I don't declare that I know it all. Brother Brian don't declare he know it all. And Pastor Sean don't declare that he know it all. But God is teaching us all. Amen. And so listen, I thank God for the teaching moment. Now, let me see. Uh, is this it? Let me see. Uh, where, where did I want to go to? Hold on. Give me a second here. Hold on, is this it? I don't think it is. Hold on, my this computer here wants to act a fool again. Uh, I probably need to clean it out. Okay, give me a second. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're learning more about him, right? And I know, listen, family, I know that y'all done heard over the years so many things about Christ that just simply wasn't true. Right. And everything that we need to know about him, about God, right? God as a whole, right? Is right here in these scriptures. Right. God tells you about himself, right? His character, how he's moving, what he's doing, who he's saving, what why he's saving, and all this other stuff. Right. God gives you all of the, the, the context. We drill on context kills false doctrine. Amen. And so listen, um, let me see. Uh Another thing that inspired me, um, let me see, let me, um, I don't want you to see it yet. I want to bring it up. Hold on. Okay, so let me get out of here. Oh, actually, hold on. No, we, we're not done here. No, 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 we're not done here yet. Hold on. I can't leave yet because one more point got to be brought out from her question. Okay, so we're back over here. So... Family, let me read this. She goes on to say this. The content of the Bible has been changed and taken out of context many, many times. So who's to say that both of the beliefs are in fact wrong? Hold on. Hold on, sis. First and second of all. The Bible has not, first of all, you said the content of the Bible has been changed and taken out of context many, many times. The Bible itself is not taking itself out of context at all. It's the people that do it. Now, the folk that God inspired to write these things, they didn't take anything out of context. Now, for you to say that, you're going to have to prove that, right? So that's almost opinionated. In fact, it is. Um, the Bible being taken out of context by people, that is the person's fault, not the word of God's fault. So again, we have to place the blame in the right space and why, know why we're placing the blame in that particular space. So again, you have to provide official proof that the Bible itself is taken out of context, if that's what you're saying. Now, people do take stuff out of the Bible out of context, but again, let me remind you, that's not the word of God's fault. That's that person's fault. They are eisegete. The eisegete is to isolate a verse or a passage or maybe even a chapter, taking it or reading into the text adding to the text, uh, 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 taking it out of context and saying stuff that it's not saying. The Bible has the, it, it defines itself. This is why when I was watching, I was revamping Brother Brian 
uh, and Pastor Sean revisiting that conversation between uh, Brother Anthony Rogers and Mr. Uh, Brandon Tatum. Y'all remember him, the, the fool who thought he can challenge Brother Anthony, mm -hmm. him, the one that got smashed. Uh, <laughs> um, he kept making the claim, well, you know, scholars say this and scholars say that. Mind you, again, he couldn't name one scholar, right? He couldn't tell Brother Anthony, well, what scholar said this? What, where is this coming from? And I'm glad Brother Anthony Rogers asked that question. Well, what scholars are saying this? Because we need to have a talk. And he couldn't tell him what scholars said this, that, and the third, right? That's another red flag for you to say, okay. You saying this to sound good, okay, but you have not backed up your statement. You haven't, you haven't given me no initial proof of what scholar is saying this for to, to bring you this, uh, to bring you to this conclusion. Now hold on. Scholars can be right, scholars can be wrong, right? But again, hold on. You got a primary source, ultimately, the Bible itself. And here's the thing. Is the Bible saying what that person is saying? And if the answer is no, then guess what? The Bible is not the problem. It's the person that's the problem. See what I'm saying? Everybody want to sit back. Remember what I told you about? We talked about uh, a, a, a couple of few hangouts ago about that comfortability, right? And I brought up the list of those so-called heretical uh, 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 points of view regarding what Christ and the Bible and most of it is dealing with God. God is a literal chicken. Mm -hmm. That was in there. Or uh, Christ was uh, half this and half that. Christ ain't this. Christ ain't that. And uh, 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 Christ, God, all this God and God is all pantheism and all that other foolishness. Listen, those are heretical, comfortable views, right? Made up by people who refuse to accept what the word of God is saying. If the word of God is saying, and ain't no if, it did say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, then that's what that means. And all things was created by him and for him, right? And the word was made flesh. Listen, the Bible means what it says, and it says what it means. See? When you look at those heretical, crazy views, those are people, Arianism, Paulism, Gnosticism, all them other isms, those are made up by people who are stiff-necked and rebellious against the word of God from jumpstart. They don't like what it says. That's why you see some of these trolls coming up here in the chat, not to give them no shine. But that's because they can't stand the truth of God. They don't like what, what God said. God says, listen, uh, 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 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever shall believe upon him shall have everlasting life, well, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The word of God says what it says, right? But see, for folk who ain't comfortable with that, folk who got, um, they in a feeling about something, right? They in a feeling about uh, Palestinian folks, they in their feelings about uh, 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 black folks, they in their feelings about white folks, I said it, they in their feelings uh, uh, about Indian folks, they in their feelings about other people, why? They in their feelings, right? And they like, well, this ain't God. This ain't God. God, I want you, but I don't want you to have mercy on them. I want you to have mercy on me, but I don't want you to have mercy on them. Hold on. Did not God check that, Brother Brown? Did not God check that kind of view, Pastor Sean? I think he did. In fact, I know he did. In Romans chapter 9, and I paraphrase, God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Get in your place. Who are you to tell God what to do and who to deal with? When you start thinking in that type of way, of thinking that you can tell God who he can be with, who he can deal with, who he can love, who he can bless, and all of that, you out of order. You don't know God. You are a rebellious person. 
and Hebrew Israelites, oneness Pentecostals, Unitarianism, Sabaleism, whatever, Jehovah Witness, all of them folk and number cults are rebellious people. Even the ones who just flat out don't believe, atheists, you're rebellious. You out of order. And so you come up with these crazy deals, right? And this is kind of leaning towards that. To say, well, the folk in the Bible took that stuff out of context. The folk in the Bible who translated took stuff out of context. No, 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 ma'am. No, no. It is not. The Bible is the, no, the Bible ain't the problem. God ain't the problem. You know who the problem is? It's you. You the problem. Mm -hmm. And I can factually say that because it was once we were a problem. We lived a life in our pastime against what goes uh, uh, contrary to what the word of God says, right? And applying stuff that we shouldn't be applying or not even dealing with stuff that we should be dealing with. It is us that's the problem. Sin is the problem. And so when folks see that the word of God starts, starts thumping on their sin, start exposing their sin, oh no, we got to hurry up and change that. You know, like I'll give you another small example. Now I'm not picking on nobody, but LGBT, they are a good factor about this, right? They got the, well, we see what it says. Okay, well, it does say uh, that a man should not lay with another man uh, 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 as he should with a woman. But now that's in front of a, 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 a statue, an idol, as if it can still be done. No, 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 no. God said it ain't supposed to be done at all. See, at all. He didn't say nothing about no statue. He didn't say nothing about no socks. He didn't say nothing about your house shoes, all right? You adding stuff to the word of God or tweaking stuff in the word of God so you can be comfortable in your own sin. 